Hi, everybody. This is uh, Levi Litvai, and I am talking to Aaron Jenny, who is also at Central European University, uh, but in the International Relations Department. I'm in the Political Science Department. Say hi. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hello. So, and we are here to talk about our our paper, which is actually quite vintage now. It's uh, it's it, it would be good as as wine uh, uh, because it was published in 2014, and the lead author on this is Yuri Medzihorsky, who was a PhD student uh, at Central European University at the time, and then the other authors are Aaron Jenny and myself. The paper's title has the Tea Party era radicalized the Republican Party: evidence from text analysis of the 2008 and 2012. Republican primary debate, and this was published in PS Political Science and Politics. So, Aaron, why did we write this paper? Oh, for so many reasons. Um, I I think a lot of us were starting to notice um, already at the beginning of Obama's presidency that something was happening on the right that kind of fell outside of the range of normal deviations, right? In terms of the kinds of rhetoric that mainstream politicians were using um, in the Republican party. Uh, and what do you remember about the Tea Party, Levy? Well, I, I mean, I, I remember um, that they were very important in the 2010 midterm elections. Mm -hmm. uh, they were a, a much more radical right wing. Uh, there, there were some religious overtones as well, mm -hmm. but, but, but the main message was taxes and, mm -hmm. uh, and Taxed we need to- enough already. Yeah, the, yeah, tax enough already, uh, taxes, and also the 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 importance of keeping the federal government out of our lives, out of our business. Mm -hmm. Uh, get, make sure that the federal government keeps their dirty hands off our Medicare's and and that was mm -hmm. a that, that was a joke, but that was a t sign at at a Tea Party rally. Uh, they really did not want the role of government to uh, to be very high, mm -hmm. and and uh, they were remember, anti bailout, right? The the famous yes. Rick Santelli, you know, rant. That, yeah, that was right. that was the early days, the birth of the of the of the modern Tea Party. When Rick Santelli went on television, it was on CNBC, and uh, and had a had a had a long rant about which the government should not bail out anybody. Yes. Yes. Yeah, these 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 guys that are so irresponsible, buying all these homes that they can't afford. This is in the middle of the subprime mortgage crisis, where millions of people were losing their homes. And the banks were collapsing. <laughs> yes. So, yes. so there was a big bailout that was organized by the government, by uh, George W. Bush, actually, in this case. Um, but it coincided. The effects of this coincided with the 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 uh, the beginning of the Obama presidency. Yes. Yes. So we were we were teaching a class in uh, in 2012 on U.S. politics. We tried to teach a class uh, uh, in presidential election years on on U.S. politics, uh, which has been really fun because that, yeah. that was the first time we did it, and uh, and have done it uh, every every presidential election since, and hopefully into the future. Uh, this will this will continue to happen, and uh, we were I mean, we were obviously following very closely the primary. We were uh, we were uh, I mean that was already general election time, but we the two of us were were following the primary and and discussing how we could get at uh, how we could get at this phenomenon of what's happening to the Republican Party due mm -hmm. to the Tea Party, and uh, this is where you I came into the picture. Who is uh, who is a brilliant methodologist, a brilliant quantitative methodologist. Uh, I I would say that uh, that he is probably the most thoughtful um, yeah. young scholar I know about who who thinks about about analyzing the social sciences mathematically. He has the mathematical foundations to have very deep understanding of these, yes. these modelings. And uh, he was just playing with uh, this quantitative text and analytical techniques. And uh, we asked them, like, well, 
here's the debate. Can we do something with this? Uh, can we can we look at a shift? And uh, and he thought that was a good idea that we could uh, we could take the debates. We selected uh, the the pre Iowa caucus debates mm. for both the 2008 and the 2012 presidency, and we scaled. The, I mean, because we wanted to see, we yes. wanted to see if what they, what they, how they talked, and what they talked about in mm-hmm. 2008 was different, right, from yes, 2012. Yes, yes. As a result of the emergence of the Tea Party movement. Yes. Yeah. So th- there are some techniques out there which can establish the ideological space pretty well based on what words are being said. So these are these are these uh, so-called scaling methods, which were kind of hot and new. I mean, right now they're kind of commonplace, but but back then still they were they were they were fun and new. Uh, so we thought, well, let's try to scale the Republican Party. So this doesn't go from Democrats to Republicans, but let's try to scale the the Republican Party and see if there is like a moderate to more extreme. Um, scale if we take the 2008 and 2012 uh, uh, pre-caucus debates. We had to go with the pre-caucus debates because we did not want the kind of the piling on that happens Mm -hmm. once once there are some election results to, Mm -hmm. to, to bias the the uh, the space so right. so you and I suggested that we go with just let let's go with the pre-caucus because right. that's right. what's going to be comparable and uh, and it turns out that uh, that it worked it worked very nicely mm-hmm. so based on our impressions of what words were associated with the space and uh, and how often they're spoken and etc cetera, etc cetera, it seemed like we got a very nice, uh, we got a very nice uh, moderate Republican to Tea Party Republican mm-hmm. uh, space, and the Tea Party side of things was best represented by Ron Paul in both mm-hmm. of the elections, in both mm-hmm. 2008 and 2012. He was kind of out there on the Tea Party end of the right. spectrum. Right, and if we it were to name it, uh, you know, by the labels that we're using in the article, it's this dimension is this uh, anti-Washington ideological dimension where on the positive end, um, this is a kind of the classically Tea Party anti-Washington ideology. And on the negative side, there would be kind of positions that are more associated with kind of like bipartisan compromise and, you know, working through the federal government to achieve certain policy aims. The other side would be, we want government off our backs. You know, federal government has done nothing but, you know, create problems for us. All right. So let's, let's talk through the results. So um, we can consistently say that on average, there is a movement towards this anti-Washington sentiment uh, between the 2008 and 2012 mm-hmm. election. I mean, we cannot say that it's causal, it's caused by the Tea Party, but, but based on what's been said, we can see there's a shift on average. Or also, if you- Anti-Washington yes, ideological yes. positioning. Mm-hmm. Yes, so, so, uh, so we can also look at not just the average, but we can look at the two candidates that competed in both elections. And uh, one of them is Mitt Romney, who actually became, who's who's important because in 2012, Mm -hmm. he became the Republican presidential candidate. And uh, nominee, yeah, nominee. Mm -hmm. And uh, and, uh, Ron Paul, who Mm -hmm. was very much representing this this ideology already in 2008, both of them, have yeah. shown a significant shift towards this anti-Washington. That's sentiment. right. So, so that's very that's clear right. as so, well. And I think more for Romney, if I'm not mistaken, then yeah, Romney moved a lot more um, to this kind of positive end, this towards this anti-Washington ideology than Ron Paul, who was basic, who's really far out there um, from the beginning, right? He's already kind of this extreme figure. So he's kind of already there, yes. <laughs> right? Oh, he yeah. sort of defines Qu- one end of the spectrum, right? Yes. Um, but yeah, I think pretty much every single one of the candidates, what are their um, eight or their, their different numbers for the, the, for the 2008 and 2012, 
um, but pretty much all of them moved um, towards a positive side. Yes. Um, yes. So, so on the on average, there's a movement. On average. And, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, uh, if you look at 2012, like this is post uh, the emergence of the Tea Party. So Herman Cain, very mm -hmm. very well represented that uh, Tea Party sentiment. And in mm. fact, uh, uh, it was it was Rick Perry and Michelle Bachman who were also mm. the closest to to Rick Perry and, and Paul. That's right. But they were actually the middle of the crowd by 2012, right, that, which is amazing. You know, Michelle Bachman um, famously said that going to Washington was like going behind enemy lines. Right. Yes. That's how. Yes. So that's how much they demagogued the federal government. They saw the federal government as a hostile nation. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So this, this article was published in uh, 2014. Uh, it doesn't get much attention. It, it's in PS. We, we looked at it more as a current event piece. Uh, it's, but, short. Uh, it's a short piece. Yeah, it's very short. And, and, and we recommend that everybody takes a look at this one. Yes. Uh, it but it really foreshadowed it what, really uh, does. a future to come. If we look at the 2016 election, Donald Trump and Ted Cruz, both quite populist, uh, both quite anti-establishment. Mm. They were the two front runners in the Republican Party. Mm. And Donald Trump has been president now for uh, almost four years. And uh, he may have another shot now. Now it's mm. looking less so. But uh, but I've seen uh, I've seen an election before where Donald Trump competed and nobody thought he could win. Um, so so you have to be cautious. And and really the Republican Party has gone along with Donald Trump. So mm. so this article yeah. actually really foreshadowed mm. that looking at this right. party mentality. That w whether it's the movement or the thing that caused the movement the Republican Party is being dragged along with this yes, thing. Very um, much so. Should I should I quote the very final yeah. sentence of Yeah, the, go ahead. I think it's I think it's very nice. So it's, it's a, it makes us seem prophetic. Uh, it concludes although the causal mechanism underlying the shift is still uncertain, it is clear that Tea Party positions moved Republican politics to an ideologically anti-Washington, anti-government position. It remains to be seen whether these effects herald a lasting shift in Republican ideology. Yeah, and I suppose, uh, I think we can say uh, for now, like, what is it, like six years later? Yes, yeah. it has. Yes, it, appears, it appears to have moved. Yes. In a well, lasting, all right. Lasting shift. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, all right. Well, thank you very much for your attention. And I hope you check out the paper. And we really enjoyed working on this. In fact, we are thinking about looking at if a similar phenomenon is going on on the Democratic side, looking at the past two elections, because now the primary competitions were on the Democratic side. Unfortunately, we don't have, right. the, uh, we don't have the skills to do this and Yurai doesn't have the time, but we're thinking about it for sure. So thank you very much for your attention. And uh, I hope you enjoy the series. Bye. Thank you guys. Bye.